Welcome to another Cadence UVM Expert webinar. My name is Brian Dickinson and this webinar is on the UVM Sequence Library. So in this tutorial we're going to show you how to use the UVM Sequence Library, we'll explain what a library is, we'll show you the basic declaration, I'll show you the basic default behavior, and then show you how to change and to customize the behavior to match your requirements. A couple of points before we start. Firstly, we assume you're already familiar with UVM. And secondly, if you look for any documentation on sequence libraries, you may not find them. Up to and including UVM 1.1, sequence libraries are undocumented. They're not mentioned in the user guide or the help files. Hopefully from UVM 1.2 release onwards, they should be documented. First thing to do is to explain what a sequence library is. So here I have a UVC with a number of sequences, SEQA to SEQD, written for the sequencer of the UVC. I can define a sequence library and I can add some or all of those UVC sequences into this library. And now the library will pick a random number of randomly selected sequences from those in the library and execute them. Both the number of sequences executed and the selection mode are by default random, but you can customize both the number and the selection uh, to match your requirements. That's the basic behavior of a, of a sequence library. Uh, let's have a look at the basic declaration. So here, my sequence library uvc underscore seq underscore lib extends from the uvm subclass uh, uvm sequence library and must have a type parameter. The type parameter is the name of the type of the data items generated by sequences in the library. Here, uvc underscore data. A library is very similar to a sequence. It has an object utilities macro and a data constructor with a single name argument, but the library must have its own utility macro, UVM sequence library utils, which creates some essential infrastructure for the library. Also in the constructor of the library, you add the UVC sequences to the library using add type wide sequence calls. So here we add SEQA, SEQB and SEQC to the library. Finally, we need to call init sequence library inside of the constructor in order to set up and construct the library infrastructure. Uh, note a library does not have a, a task body. It cannot define its own sequences. You can only add predefined sequences of the UBC into the library. That's the basic declaration. Let's see how it works. Well, the behavior of the library is controlled by some properties. There's two properties, min random count and max random count, and these define the upper and lower constraint for the random number, which will be the number of sequences from the library which are executed. By default, both these values are 10. Uh, for the selection of the sequences from the library, we have a property called selection mode. This has four possible values. Uh, first one is rand. This is the default mode. This is just random selection. Uh, every sequence in the library is equally likely. Second option is rand c. This will uh, is cyclic randomization. It'll pick all of the sequences from the library in a random order until they're all executed and it'll start the new iteration. So no repetition of a sequence until all sequences have been executed. Third option is item. This actually doesn't select sequences. This just generates data items. So for us, it will just generate random UVC underscore data individual items. A fourth option is user. So this allows the user to define their own selection algorithm. By default, this just iterates through all the sequences in the order which they were added to the library, but you can modify this behavior as we shall see. So a sequence library. It generates a random number between the min and the max random count limits, and then it uses the selection mode to pick that number of, of, of sequences from the library and execute them. So by default, it'll pick 10 sequences from the library using the simple random selection. That's the behavior of the sequence library. Let's show you how you can uh, select it now. So a sequence library is treated like any other sequence. So you can set the sequence library to be the default sequence of a UVC sequencer. So in my test class here, what I'm going to do is create an instance of the sequence library using the factory create call. And then I'll use a UVM config DB set to set this instance, seqlib, to be the default sequence of the uvc.agent.sequencer component. Uh, note that the type for the set command is uvm underscore sequence underscore base. You need this to make sure the configuration setting is correctly matched. 
Uh, we can also print the library. This is good for a debug. In fact, this is why we use an instance of the library rather than the type inside of the set command, because the instance gives us better control and debug of the sequence library. So this sets the default sequence of the EVC sequencer. You can also execute the library, okay, if you wish, directly from a test class. So in my test class here, I have a, a reference, SEQR, on the uvc.agent.sequencer component. I create an instance of the sequence library as before. I can print that instance for debug purposes. And finally, in the run phase of the test class, I can call the start method of the sequence library instance and pass the reference to the sequencer as an argument to it. When you print the sequence library, uh, this is what you get for debug. So it shows you the values of the properties, the min and the max random count, also the selection mode. And it also sh shows you the sequences which are registered with the sequencer. So here in the sequences queue here, it shows you SEQA and B and C as being added to this library. That's what you get when you print the library. When you execute the library, you automatically get a, a, a UVM info message with the message ID of seqlib slash start. And this tells you that you're executing a sequence library. It tells you the value of the random number, which is 10. And it also shows you the selection mode here, which is the RAND selection mode. So this gives you that that's the default behavior sequence library. What happens if you want to change the default behavior? So for instance, we only want to select seven sequences from a library. And uh, we want to use the RAND C selection mode. Well, what we can simply do is because we have an instance of the sequence library, we can directly write to the properties of the sequence library. So here we set the selection mode to the RAND C option, and we set the min and the max random count both to seven. And then we set this instance as the default sequence of the sequencer. And now when we execute this library, we should see seven iterations. The random value is set to seven, and the mode should be set to RAND C. You can also customize an instance of the library instance by adding or removing sequences from it. So again, here we have a, an instance of the sequence library, custlib, and now I can call a remove sequence method of custlib to remove seqa from the library, and I can call an add sequence method here to add seqd to this particular library. And now when I print the library, you'll see that SEQA has been removed and SEQD has been added. So this particular instance of the library has a different set of sequences, okay, for this particular instance. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the implementation of the sequence library. When you have a look at the print here, you'll see that there is a sequences array here, which lists the sequences which have been added to the library, SEQ A, B, and C. This uh, array is actually a queue. It's a queue of sequence references. Uh, the indices for the references are given down the side, so they iterate from zero upwards. Uh, here we have zero for SEQ A, uh, one for SEQ B, and index two for SEQ C. Uh, so they're stored in the queue, and then all the library does is it picks one index from that queue and executes the sequence it finds at that index. So now we know this, we should now know how to implement a user-defined selection mode. So remember, if you set the mode to be UVM SEQ lib user, this allows you to define your own selection or algorithm for the sequences of the library. And you do this by overriding the method select sequence. So the method select sequence must return an index for the sequences queue. So it must return an integer from zero to the maximum index in the queue. And to make your life easier, you have an input argument to select sequence, which is the largest valid index of the queue in the argument max. So all you need to do in your select sequence is return a value between zero and max. Now the default implementation simply iterates through all the sequences in the order in which they've been added to the queue, but you can define your own selection or algorithm. So here in uh, UBC SEQ lib, we define our own implementation of select sequence. Uh, what we do is we randomize an index between zero and the maximum value, and then we check what sequence is at that index. 
And if a sequence that index is SEQC, then we generate a new index. In fact, we generate an index until it's not pointing at SEQC, and then we return that index. So now if we set the mode to UVM SEQ lib user, we would then randomly choose any sequence from the library except for SEQC. Those are default behavior of the uh, sequence library. A couple of more advanced options which you may find useful. Uh, first of all, in configuring sequence libraries, you could use something called a sequence library configuration object. So what I can do here is I can create a handle on the UVM sequence library CFG class. This is called libcfg, and I can create an instance of that configuration object. And when I create the instance, I can pass in the uh, configuration values, the selection mode and the max and the min random counts to it. And then I can set this configuration into an existing default sequence. So I use the set command here, configuration set, with the UVM sequence library CFG type and I put the libcfg instance into the config property of the default sequence. And now this applies this configuration information to the sequence library at that default sequence. Uh, this is useful if you want to declare one configuration for multiple sequence libraries. Um, final advance point here, um, as well as adding sequences to a library inside a library, you can also add sequences to a library from inside of a sequence. So here, this is my sequence SEQA. Inside of a sequence, I can call macros here, UVM add to SEQ lib. This allows me to add this sequence to the UVM sequence lib and also the UVC basic sequence lib. Uh, add this sequence to both of those libraries. Um, this has some readability issues. It's a lot easier to see the contents of a library when you're adding them in the library itself. If you're going to use this kind of uh, implementation, you should always print your libraries so you can keep a track of what sequences have been added to them. Okay, finally, uh, a couple of limitations. So it currently, uh, up to UVM 1.1, uh, a sequence library cannot be executed as part of a virtual sequence. So you can't synchronize up a UVC executing a uh, sequence library with other UVCs inside of a virtual sequence. It kind of limits the application currently of a sequence library. Uh, but we can use them. For example, you can use it for any kind of unsynchronized UVC. You can do a random selection of sequences from a sub set of those UVC sequences uh, may be useful for executing all of the sequences in a random order of a UVC for testing purposes or for, for example, randomly switching between different modes when you have different sequences for a response generator. Okay, I hope you find this uh, webinar hopeful and thank you for um, watching.